Antibiotics should not be used in up to 98% of sinus infections. This is breaking news from the Infectious Disease Society of America. Hi, I'm Dr. James Machino. A review of the evidence by the IDSA prompted some new guidelines recently in terms of how to treat sinus infections. The realization has been that by over-treating sinus infections with antibiotics, it's caused a lot of the antibiotic resistance problems that we've created today and the creation of superbugs that can't really be controlled with antibiotics. So you know the nightmare that's, that's evolved from this. So about one in seven people are diagnosed with a sinus infection each year. It's the fifth leading cause for antibiotic prescriptions being written. And yet in 90 to 98 percent of cases, the infection is actually caused by a virus, not a bacteria. So antibiotics are not even effective in up to 98 percent of cases. And when they're used inappropriately, then what happens is you start to foster the development of drug-resistant superbugs which can be lethal down the road to a lot of people. And also, if you ever need antibiotics down the road, you know, you've decreased the likelihood they're going to work for you. So these new guidelines that have been set forth by the Infectious Disease Society of America in March of 2012 explain to physicians and to the general public, you know, how to tell the difference between a viral or a bacterial sinus infection. What's the likelihood? So here, here's sort of the distinguishing features that if the symptoms last for 10 days or more and they're not improving, then you might want to consider an antibiotic there. Whereas before the previous guideline said, you know, if the symptoms last seven days, but now they said, no, wait 10 days before you start to act. Also, if the symptoms are really severe and, and you have a fever of 102 degrees Fahrenheit, a lot of nasal discharge, facial pain that's lasting three to four days in a row and you're really sick, chances are that it's bacterial and you need an antibiotic. Or the person's had an upper respiratory tract viral type of infection. Uh, it's starting to get better after five or six days and suddenly it gets much worse. And uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, nasal discharge and, and a new fever starts and there's headache pain. It might be now a secondary bacterial infection has set in and so antibiotics would be justified in those cases. But if the antibiotics are going to be written, then it should be for a five to seven day course. Previously, they were told to write prescriptions for 10 to 14 days. They've shortened the course just five to seven days. They also say during the sinus infection, don't use decongestions and antihistamines. In the long run, they make things worse. Whereas saline irrigation of the nasal canal can be useful, but it's really uncomfortable for children. Just so you're aware of that. What gets overlooked a lot of times is where the, the role of natural medicine can be helpful. I will tell you that that uh, if you have a sinus infection or even an upper respiratory tract infection, adding the P73 wild oregano blend, this form of oil of oregano, at 250 milligram capsules, you know, four capsules three times a day, can really help to knock out a lot of different microorganisms, both viral and bacterial. So it never, the problem doesn't really get to escalate to the point where you'd have to be worried about a bacterial infection. And then, of course, immune modulation is very important. Get your own immune cells into the fight. Sometimes taking five to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D can help to do that. And now some people can't take that much vitamin D, but most of us are candidates for it. Taking a supplement that has reishi mushroom extract with astragalus and milk thistle and indole 3 carbonyl, I, I would take four caplets twice a day of a combination like that. And on, if your immune system's weak and you tend to get these in, any kind of infection over and over again, that supplement is great as well as if you go to uh, mushroomharvest.com, you'll see they sell a 14 mushroom blend that has tremendous Im immune modulation effects. I, I would suggest taking two teaspoons a day, that's four grams of material. And also a high potency multivitamin that has 1,000 milligrams of C and 400 IUs of vitamin E, 200 micrograms of selenium as well as probiotics, you know, two where it has sort of one billion at least uh, live friendly bacteria in a capsule. I would take two of those a day. Helps with immune modulation. So to really clarify this, click on the link below and read my review article on this. It's called The Emergence of Antibiotic Resistant Bacteria, Cautioning Patients About the Dangers of Antibiotic Drug Overuse and Abuse. Um, you'll see all the clinical references are there, so you'll, you'll know you're on, on uh, sound footing as you, you read the article. But this is a very important health concern that we have today. 
Now remember that at machinohealth.com, you'll see my other research review papers, you'll see footage from my live seminars, other downloads and resources I've created. They're all there for free to help you lead a long, healthy, functional life. My research review papers and teaching materials are complete with all the scientific references, so you'll see you're only getting sound, evidence-based information from me on any topic that you're looking for. So you really should use machinohealth.com as an ongoing, reliable resource of health and wellness information for both you and your family. Thanks so much for watching.